The NDC makes the argument that discrepancies have been identified in this particular electoral role and they are demanding that the Electoral Commission conduct a forensic audit of this electoral roll before the December 7 general elections. This is the one demand of the opposition NDC and we here on your election command centre are here to provide you details as it happens all throughout today as to exactly what will be transpiring here from here until the termination point which is the headquarters of the Electoral Commission. There's a petition expected to be delivered to the MPs and the leadership in Parliament but the final termination point will be the headquarters of the Electoral Commission. All throughout the morning about 6 a.m. persons have been gathering here at which this, this particular spot, the Obra spot, which has become a traditional spot, a home spot for almost all protests in the capital and in the country. Loud blasting music as the hundreds and thousands of demonstrators process onto the street headed towards the Farisco traffic light area. They are dancing, they are celebrating, but above it all, there is one simple demand that they are making of, of, of the Electoral Commission, that they give them the opportunity or an opportunity be provided for a forensic audit into the country's electoral role. The police service are here in their numbers and you're seeing a number of them in your shots right now, fully clothed in preparation for today's protest and what will pan out. There are tricycles here as well, what has been known in different parts of the country as Mahama Kandu as well, all here and present and as well, loud blasting music in terms of what it is that we're seeing, the old, all being part of this particular protest, all here today seeking to be a part of this particular demonstration as the roundabout area of the circle interchange completely taken over by these demonstrators in their large numbers this particular afternoon, morning I should say, in preparation for what is a demand being made of the Electoral Commission that they allow for a forensic audit of the country's voters' role. This is your election command center. We're live on TV3 and live on 3FM as well as we continue to bring you live details and live coverage of the NDC's Enough is Enough demonstration. We will provide you a bit more in terms of what the conversations are on the ground, what the opinions of the supporters are as well. But for now, what you're seeing are live shots of exactly what it is that's transpiring as to exactly what's happening around around this place and you're seeing people rolling their hands around suggesting that change is here yes the same is the narrative but the protest is yet to officially begin what does the resilience of that democracy is our ability to fight the tyrant and defeat him and expel democracy once again. Elections alone does not guarantee democracy. It is democratic minded persons, democratic minded citizens who are ready to fight for their rights who can guarantee democracy. Once upon a time, when this country was under colonialism, our leaders like Osage Foot of Tanguan and Roma, Sanya Dete, Kofra Jipo, Ebota, I decided to fight so that those of us living now can live in peace. Therefore, some people die, but that is the reason why we are living today. And so today is our time. We must not let our ancestors down. We must not let our future generations down. It is our time to fight. What we are doing is to prevent war in this country. If you want to prevent war, you fight to, to remove everything that, is, that has the tendency to generate into war. Please, there is no option. There's no sitting on the fence. If you sit on the fence today and allow conflict to mature into war, you will be conscripted into the army to fight and die. 
So instead of waiting for war to break, for you to be persuaded to go and fight and die, fight now against the elements that are generating the conflict. So we are warning them, today is only the beginning. If they think that after the demonstration, everybody will go to sleep, if they don't accede to the request, they are joking. Today is just the beginning. And that is why we have restricted this demonstration to regional offices. The next demonstration will go to district and constituency offices of the Electoral Commission. And we will fight and fight and fight till the right thing is done. We are marching to save our country. It is now or never. There is no sitting on the fence. You are either part of the problem or you are part of the solution. Let every youth, unemployed youth in this country get up. And let us fight to save our country. Let us fight to save our economy. Let us fight the lives of numerous Ghanaians who cannot walk, who cannot come out. But we are here today. We are going to fight. And we will fight and fight and fight till the right is done. And we want to send a message. We want to send a message to those who pretend to be peace loving. If you pretend to be peace loving, and you are condoning wrongdoing, you are actually the one who is brooding conflict in this country. Those who want peace must prepare and fight against the element that will be disrupting in the country. That is why we are ready to fight against the element that will disturb our democracy. So thank you very much, and may God bless our homeland Ghana. We will not retreat and we will not surrender. We are going straight for victory. Victory for our democracy. Victory for not only a political party, but victory for the democracy and freedom of this country. Thank you very much. And may God you have made the call in Parliament for the forensic audit as well. The protest today. Is it the case that you will take this up further in Parliament and demand that? a joint parliamentary committee of some sort looks into the contents on the register. The truth is that it is so obvious for anyone to notice that the register, the electoral register has been tampered with. The electoral commission has no option than to avail himself and the register for a possible forensic audit and a system audit. It is for all of us to understand that this must be done to preserve the peace of our country. And so we are demanding that as a matter of urgency, she should make the register available for forensic and a system audit. That must be done. It is not negotiable. We are demanding that and we insist that it should be done before the elections. And, and for you in Parliament, the, the big question is what course of action possibly could you take in Parliament as well in relation to this? We started a call from Parliament. After this demonstration, we will look at our options. And if we have to recall Parliament for this, we will do so. In re no, I can't give you details, but what I can tell you is that don't be surprised to expect a possible recall of Parliament for us to consider the need for this register to be properly audited. Because we insist that from the level of um, tampering that we have seen with the register, nothing else should be done apart from auditing the system for us to see the magnitude, the magnitude of tampering and how they've messed the system up. I mean, for my constituency, for example, 
we saw the inclusion of about 3,000 names into the transfer register and multiple names everywhere. So the register, as we've seen in my constituency, has been bloated by approximately 5,000. And so what else can we do? We need to ensure that the writing has been done. The Electoral Commission is up to something. Certainly up to something. We have uncovered it and we are insisting that the writing must be done. So as we today, what you are seeing today is just the first step. We will undertake a series of activities, including a possible recall of parliament for us to compel the electoral commissioner. At this moment, we are carrying on a peaceful demonstration. Yeah. But, and but that's it. particular group that you want to hear from on this subject matter? Oh, I think we, the, the most important person is the Ghanaian. The Ghanaian um, that is going to obviously cast a vote and we want to ensure that on the day of voting you'll be given opportunity to perform your constitutional function and also ensure that your vote counts. And so that is all what we are asking for. We are asking the people of Ghana to get involved and to insist and demand that a writing must be done. Honorable, he says that they've corrected these errors that you've, you've raised, the concerns that you've raised as a party, and, and, and they're asking that you trust them in the work that they've done. So if they have corrected it, they should give it to us what they've corrected. I don't know what they have corrected. I have come out with a press conference referencing my constituency. I've asked them to correct it. Up to date, I don't know what they have corrected. So how can I believe you? What is the basis? You have added over 5,000 names to the voter register in my constituency. I've seen multiple names. I've seen names that are missing. I've complained to you. And you are saying you have corrected it. How do I trust you? Mr. Come for a conversation. Give me the evidence. Give me the evidence of what you have corrected so that we can sit down and talk. They are hiding something. They are certainly up to something. And let me tell you, we will demand that a proper forensic and systems audit be conducted on the voter register. Because as it stands now, it is obvious, very obvious, that someone somewhere has tampered with the voter register. I'm sure you, and this is crying woo. Yes. You, 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 you've seen what is likely to happen, so you are crying woo. What do you, what do you mean? I, 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 I don't think so. I don't think so. I think we shouldn't jump the gun. Let me put it that way. First and first. Ghana is going to the polls on the 7th of December. Proud to that, we have seen a voter register that has been tampered with. We have seen multiple errors. We have seen inconsistencies. And we have seen some discrepancies. We are asking the Electoral Commission to avail the register for a possible systems and forensic audit. We insist that must be done. So far, the Electoral Commission is only telling us that they have corrected it without providing us evidence. We want to see what they have corrected. Okay. Why are they evasive? If they have nothing to hide, why are they running away from this? This is basic. Okay, so we will not allow them to plunge this country into a possible violence. We won't allow them. We are asking for right for the right thing to be done. Nothing more, nothing less. Anybody who asks is, the EC says, come for a conversation. They've address the concerns you're raising as a party, just sit down with them so that you can go over the data again and you'll be satisfied with the work they've done. Why are you on the streets today? We don't want a conversation. A conversation does not lead to free, fair elections. What leads to free, fair elections is a credible register. We're asking, we've gone past the time for conversations. In fact, the Electoral Commission painted a picture that the NDC was lying. Now they admit that there are real challenges based on the re issues that we raised. And now we are saying that, fine, if you fix them, your incompetence is what led to those problems in the first place. So we do not trust the Electoral Commission to have the capacity to fix it. So if that's the case, then let us have a situation, let's have a situation where we have an independent audit, an independent audit by independent auditors of what the Electoral Commission has done. That's going to give all parties in this election peace of mind and confidence to know that yes we have a credible register so what we are we're not asking for too much there's nothing to have a conversation about conversations are not what the people of Ghana will vote with conversations are not what will give us a free credible election a credible register will so let the NDC bring its IT personnel personnel the MPP the CPP all the political parties 
bring your IT person. The EC should bring his IT person. And let's get an independent auditor, be it KPMG or Deloitte or EY, whichever one of them. Let's have that process done. We can complete that process in less than seven days and meet the deadline for the EC to start its printing. But the EC should not think that we are going to sit down as a political party and allow them to go ahead and print a flawed register. That won't happen. The EC says that this action would obviously not claim it. After all said and done, what is next from here? The EC must accept the demand for an independent audit. If the EC is sure that they have really cleaned up the, 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 the register, what are they afraid of? Why are you afraid of an audit? I mean, why are you afraid of an audit if the register is credible, free and fair? Why are you afraid of an audit if you claim that the issues that we have raised have been dealt with? Then show us. And don't just show us show us and every one of the player because we are being we're being very fair we, we don't want it to be favored so we want it to happen in front of everybody let all the political parties be there and let us all agree that the register is free and fair if we agree the register is free and fair we'll go into the elections did you identify any of these discrepancies in your constituency as well uh, with that widespread nature it's been reported there have been a few issues with a special voters list in my constituency where a few people whose names are supposed to be on a special voters register is not on the special voters register and it also doesn't appear in the regular register so those people are being disenfranchised because their names have been moved from their polling station and ought to appear in the special voters list is not appearing and so now those are people who we have challenges with well, just one thing away from this we know that you are also on your own plan a separate protest uh, towards the, the Chief Justice seeking to compel, uh, yes, to, to call that That's case. On the, 8th, on the 8th of October, we're going to be back here again. And that time we are marching to the Chief Justice. Because the Chief Justice is helping President Akufuado and, 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 and helping him to stay the hand of Parliament from presenting the bill that Parliament has passed on the anti-LGBTQ. This country says no to homosexuality. This country says no to trumu trumu. We won't allow that in this country. We would march and demonstrate to protect the independence of our children. And so on the 8th of October, we're all coming back here with the clergy and traditional authority to march to the Chief Justice's office to demand from the Chief Justice that the right thing is done. Being on the street is not going to answer or address the concerns you're raising. Come for a conversation. They've addressed the concerns. So come, let's sit down and have a look at the matters. Has the Electoral Commission admitted that engaging in criminality also doesn't solve the problem? If the Electoral Commission has engaged in criminality, and because of that we were asking the Electoral Commission to allow the media to be present at the meeting and because they know criminality had been occasioned so they prevented the media from covering the program today we woke up this morning realizing that the electoral commission had issued a memo to all the regional directors and the district electoral officers that when we submit our petitions in the regions they should not speak to it they should only inform our people in the regions that they are forwarding it to the commission. What do they have to hide? What this means is that even the region-specific issues that would have been presented to the regions, the electoral commission is saying that, hey, you guys don't know it better than we at the headquarters know it. This shows that the electoral commission headquarters itself is a crime scene. So the only thing that can solve this problem is an independent forensic audit and not allow the very people who allow the TV to occur under CCTV surveillance with military and police protection to be those who are giving vain assurances to Ghanaians that they are going to solve the problem. How can you sit and allow 243,540 2020 transfers to be added to the 2024 Provisional Voters Register? What kind of criminality is that? How can you sit and allow almost 4,000 people to be deleted from the voters' register? How can you sit and allow over 15,000 people to be transferred such that we do not know the exact places where they previously registered? And, and these transfers were occasioned from where the headquarters itself? It is only a forensic audit that can answer. But per the conduct of the EC, they are saying that the region should not say anything. They should keep mute and allow the commission to answer. What does it tell you? They know more than we know. The memo is more than meets the eye. 
This demonstration is to send a clear signal to the Electoral Commission. Look at the numbers. This is a demonstration that was called within just one week. Think about it. Look at the numbers. Look, we are peace-loving people. Our flag bearer, John Dramani Mahama, handed over power peacefully when he was president. Akufuadu, unfortunately, is clothing the presidency in infamy with his continuous rhetoric that he will not hand over to somebody that he defeated. I'm putting it to him here and now, on this street, that Akufuadu will definitely leave office on January 6th. In any case, per the constitution of Ghana, he doesn't have the luxury of handing over. On January 6th, it is done. His job is over and President Mahama Ishallah will be sworn in as the next president of the Republic of Ghana. And when that happens, assuming the EC will still not have allowed the forensic audit to take place, the bigger and deeper forensic audit will take place in 2025. Thank you. Thank you very much. That's the Director of Elections of the let's go, let's go. NDC, Dr. Omane Boama. If there is a system that doesn't need an audit in this country, then it means it is not the best system. As and when you are able to compile a register, that you are aware that because of its deficiency, you would have to have it exhibited. If there has been an exhibition and we have seen a very huge chunk of error, in some instances, deliberate error. And you are telling us you cannot audit it, then what have you hi what have you to hide? It will have to mean that they have something to hide. So whatever they have hidden in the register, they have to now let us eliminate it before we go into the election. If not, it will not be fair. If not, it will not be fair. The, the EC has made the point that, look, a demonstration is not important. What do you say to that? They are not democratic. They are a bunch of undemocratic individuals, very dictatorial. I mean, the fact that you have an independence doesn't mean you are an issue unto yourself. Without us, there is no electoral commission. Without the electorate, who, what, what? We can have an election. So, I mean, they have to understand that they are in service to the people of this country and they are not service themselves. They are not serving their, their pay masters. They have shown clearly that they are players instead of referees. I mean, if you have nothing to hide, let us go into an audit and have the, the whole electoral roll registered, I mean, audited. If we audit it and it comes out that the auditing has not shown anything, I mean, everyone will have a very clear mind to the extent that everything will be fair. But until we are able to see transparency, then you should be, I mean, aware that the people are up for something. And if anyone tries to want to rig the election, it will not call for peace in this country. Our existence as, as an organization is to call for peace. And that is the only reason why we have come here to make sure that we support the National Democratic Congress in our quest for peace. Because if there is anything Reagan in the next election, we will see Ghana again. Myself, I wouldn't want to have a president who has rigged an election to lead me. And I will call for anything. So in the best interest of all of us, in our own interest, we should call for a forensic audit. That will help for everyone to know the fairness and the transparency in the, in the, in the electoral rule. Thank you. And the leadership of Arise Ghana. My name is Apostle Ramblin Konlabi from Apostolic Mantel Worship Center. The General of Assault Apostolic Mantel Worship Center. Apostle, why are you here today? Left your left the church and the business to be I here. I'm here because of peace. I am here for peace. If somebody is advocating for peace, some of us will join him. Regardless of wherever we are standing. Now Somebody called for forensic audit 2016, I think 2016, 2016, and it was done. Now, somebody also is calling for the same forensic audit. You said no. You are not being fair to each other. You understand? Watch this. Remember that NDC has 
five point something voters. MPP also have five point something. So the nation is divided. You understand? So if they are calling for forensic audit, give it out. Call all the stakeholders. Let them sit down. What are you hiding? That you said no. So me, I am joining, or I joined this morning because I want peace to prevail in this nation. I have nowhere to go. Ghana is my country. I love Ghana. I will stay in Ghana. Ghana is my country. As a person, my church is in Ghana. Even if you travel, you will not get the freedom. You will not get the freedom like um, Ghana. You understand? So I'm calling the EC that listen, open up, call the stakeholders, let them sit down. Whatever, have a credible register. Now, if we go to election and one lose, fine. You understand? That listen, the register was open to you. You know everything. But if you just keep no, I'm not going to do it. Why are you doing that? The reason why people demonstrate eh, is that they have a feeling within them. And they want others to hear. Now, people, the whole world to hear. Now, this demonstration, if something happened, if they don't take it and something happened, Mama can go back and say, no, he doesn't even trust the register. And so many things happen. Look, remember, he has followers. So I beg you, with all due respect, that you see, please open up. Come on, listen. Afrojan is there. He's working freely. Nobody is, nobody says Afrojan. Salota Sai is there. She's working freely. Why do you want to do something that people will just look at with a certain eye? Why do you want to do that? Right. Let's, let's talk about, about the Peace Council and the work that you and the work that you are doing and the Christian Council as well, the Christian community. What's your expectation of these groups on these demands? Let me tell you something. The Christian Council should bow down their heads to shame. Let me tell you something. The Peace Council has no credibility. Watch this. If you criticize somebody of wrongful doing, and somebody comes and practice the same thing, and you can't talk about it, then you are not a truthful person. That is Christian Council for you. I don't know why they can't come out and talk. Look, I'm on in the Christian Council is just a few organizations that they speak for Christians. Even, even, even they have criteria. You can join, you do not accept you. So please, as for those people, me, they fail this nation. Especially the Christian Council, especially the Christian, they fail this nation. You want your mama since 2015. Whatever he does, you guys on him. Why are you not talking now? No, you were talking. You were doing all the look. Why are you not talking now? Eight years now. Peace Council have not spoken. Eight years now. Peace Council have not spoken. But in Joma four years, you were lambasting the man. What has your mama done to you? We got to tell what to know. So me, I am not for one. I, I, I wear my regalia not because I need anything from anybody. I don't need anything. I want peace in this nation. Let peace prevail. Open the register. Let everything be credible. Whoever loses, he loses. And whoever wins, Ghana is the first. I'm here to support the uh, NDC demonstration concerning the forensic audit on the register on the register because in 2015 Dr. Baumia made a series of press conferences indicating that the, the, the current then register was incredible to fit into the election and the, the, the commissioner then hear their voice and allow them in so why now in 2024 NDC raised the concern civil society organization raised the concern Religious bodies are talking, and the EC do not want to hear us. What is the what is it in the register that they are hiding? What is it in the register that they are hiding? 
Is it their manipulation approach to steal the, this election in favor of Dr. Bawomia, which she have performed abysmally in this country? Is that, is that what the EC is proposing? Other day, I watched uh, uh, Boss Mastari stated that stated that the, the, the register have been audited already through exhibition. Why can you be auditing through exhibition while there is a fault in the register, irregularity in the register, and you don't want us to, to, to I mean, verify everything again? So we civil society organization uh, organization are here to support the, the, the demonstration calling for the forensic audit into this register. We want the election to be free, fair and transparent. So that if party A lose, you know that fair game, you have lose. But you cannot be hiding anything. You cannot be hiding anything. And so that if the person lose and the supporters will move to the street, cause conflict or distraction on the street. I am here to support the demonstration. I want to do so because the MPP collaborating with the EC to rig the election, which is not fair. I say this because 2016, the same MPP called for frontier Ozek. If you can remember, KPMG did the audit. It was the same GM Mensah who was the head of the IEA. She was pushing for the audit and the audit was granted. Thank God she is now the head of the EC. MDC is calling for an audit based on irregularities identified. And you are saying you won't grant that. Rather saying the MDC is to submit their evidence to the EC. If you are the problem, how do I submit my problem to the problem? It's not possible. An independent body must come in. And that is why we are all joining the DOMO today. To praise the EC to accept the audit of what MDC is requesting for. From the Yilo Krobo, East region. Um, we are here to tell the EC that we want a clean um, um, register. In 2016, a good father went to um, America and told the people there that we need a clean election and a, free, a, a clean register. And so the EC then was able to do that for him. Um, 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 since 93, we've had a peaceful election. Till now, my, my brother, can you attest to the fact that since 1930 to 2020, I mean 2020, we've not had any demonstration against the EC until now. Why? Because we, 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 we know and we think that the NDC has a point in whatever they are saying. Listen, if you think you are an EC and everything is clear, why couldn't you detect faults in it during all this war? Until the NDC said there's something wrong with the, with, the, with the register. And there you came out to say that yes, uh, they should come and sit down and dialogue. You think you, you, why don't you listen to what they are saying so that you give them um, um, a credible register for them to be able to do the things that they want to do? The president of Ghana has, has really packed the, the, the electoral commission with his communicators. And that's why Boss Monasari could stand and tell us that the NDC is a, is a threat to democracy. My brother, somebody who was able to detect faults in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the register is a threat to democracy? How many, how many times did the electoral commission declare the results of Ghana in 2020? More than seven times. So we are here to tell Ghanaians that they should be wise and also vote for the NDC because they are the people who can protect the democracy of Ghana. We are here for change. We are here to tell Ghana that it should give us more change. We are here, the youth, we are suffering. Why are the youth suffering? Why? Because you lied to us that you are going to be free SHS. But the free SHS, we are not seeing anything. We, the youth, we are suffering. Right now, we don't know what to do. We want, we want our current president back. We want the incoming president. We want the incoming president, John Dramani Mahama, back in this country. We are suffering too much. Oh, why? Why Nanado and Baumia? Why? And Napo? Why? We are suffering. We want, we want to tell the youth that when they are going to vote, vote for His Excellency, John Dramani Mahama. He is the incoming president. He is the Osea Dia Yo. Look at Circle. Look at Kotokawa Market. Look at the Tema, tema Port. We, are no, we don't know what to say. Mama, we need you. We need a change. John Draman, Mama, we need a change. Thank you very much. All right, so that's a, a young voter from the Uwe Jagbawe constituency. Let's perhaps speak to a bit more people. Where are you coming from to be here today? I'm from Kaswa. 
Yeah, I came here for a very good cause, a just cause. We cannot live in this country for other people to decide who they want to lead this country. The cause has been from day one. The rigging machination has been from day one. We cannot live in a country where all democratic efforts to get the EC, to clean the register, to clean and have a valid register, a valid registration document that represents the people, that represents the people. And you are adamant. Why? What is our mistake? What is our problem? Is it our problem to accept a democratic regime? A same democratic regime that brought our president, Akufuado, to power. I'm ashamed of Akufuado. You have let us down. You have disappointed us. We are, we are ashamed as Ghanaians that you are our president. We gave our goodwill. We, are, we supported you. You are fighting for us under the guise of democratic leadership. Today, you have shown our, us your true color. We cannot live in a country where all our cries are being muted because of an, a document being followed by a certain political clique to represent a certain party, a certain family. Ghana is not for only one family. Ghana is for everybody. We believe in Ghana. This is not a Ghana Nkrumah fought for. If Nkrumah fought for Ghana, and today we have this type of leadership, we must be very much ashamed. Akufuado, you are a failed government. You are a failed president. You have failed our, our African leadership. You have failed. Leave. You cannot force your protege on us. You cannot force your, your, your aplanque on us. You cannot force us to accept who you want to, 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 to inherit from you. You have failed. Just go. We don't need you. Go. Your time is up. You cannot hide under a democratic regime and continue to push your, your, your parochial agenda. Ghana is not for only one family. Ghana is for all of us. Thank you. If you want to check on the VAR, you would project it to everybody to see, for them to judge and know that yes, this is what is really it is. But this electoral commission said no, they will not pro provide a public forum for us to let us have a forensic auditing of the register. So we are calling for this. And that's the reason why we're on the street today. And we are marching to them that they should they must adhere to our voice and give us a forensic auditing so that we'll be able to have a credible register for 2024 election. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Let's try to uh, engage a lot more people, uh, relatively older. Boss, why are you here today? How old are you? You're supposed to be home resting. I'm, I'm representing the blind people. Because if something happens, they can't go anywhere. They will die mislessly. So you see have to do the right thing for Ghanaians. For instance, if you, you have been to the polling center to vote and your name is not there, please, what will, what will happen? You will not be happy if I'm lying. Yeah. So we are here to demonstrate and tell the whole world that our EC should do something better for the country to get its own peace. Thank you. Thank you. And so the procession has really started at this particular point in time. And a lot more groups, a lot more individuals, persons really affiliated to the NDC, already making their way to this particular place. But I continue to tell you that the entire area has been taken over by the supporters of the NDC in their large numbers. And the demand is really simple of the Electoral Commission. They say that they want a forensic audit of the country's current uh, electoral roll. The Electoral Commission, interestingly, before this particular protest, has said, look, a demonstration is not going to do anything. It is only going to increase the animosity. So I've made the argument as well that you should go for a conversation and not necessarily a protest. How do you respond to um, the Peace Council, Cordeo, all making such claims and asking you to go and meet the, the EC instead of being on the street? Uh, thank you very much for the op opportunity. Let me say that in every situation, there are stakeholders. I think that NDC is a prime stakeholder in the election. Those other people who are talking about 
uh, this particular situation are not going to contest any election. The NDC is going to contest an election. And the NDC is going to invest in that election. And so the NDC must be very, very clear in its mind that the election that is going to contest in, that the field, the field is the field is level so that they can contest their elections in a manner that at the end of the day it will be fair and transparent. And so that is the reason why the NDC will insist that uh, the audit, the forensic audit has to be done. Now let me tell you something. Somebody may ask, why is the NDC protesting? It's not the first time that the NDC has protested. The NDC has protested in the past and the NPP has protested in the past. Now it is not, it's not also the case that the NDC did not try to meet the Electoral Commission for these matters to be resolved. The NDC actually met the Electoral Commission and the matters were not resolved. And as a result of that, we think that we should do this protest. Now this protest, this protest is very, very important in the sense that we want the Electoral Commission to know that we are not going to accept any situation where, if you like, we we'll find irregularities in the election. We have identified certain, certain irregularities. We have identified certain situations and we think that those situations are not acceptable to us. The Electoral Commission is a referee in this particular game. And the referee, every referee has to listen to the players in that particular game. We are players and the Electoral Commission has a responsibility to listen to us. If the Electoral Commission is not prepared to listen to us, we are, we are prepared to continue with this demonstration for as long as they are not prepared to listen to us. And so, this is just the beginning of the demonstration. It will continue until such time that the Electoral Commission decides to listen to us and the audit is conducted. Thank you. Thank you very much, Honorable, uh, as well, for speaking to us. And a lot more persons are joining as the procession continues. A reminder that this is your election command center. We're bringing you live coverage of the NDC's Enough is Enough demonstration. We've been hearing from some of the leadership of the party. We've heard from the director of elections in particular, who's laid out a number of the concerns uh, that they have raised and the discrepancies to which reason they are demanding this particular forensic audit. We've heard from the minority leader a lot earlier as well in relation to this and the case is one and one only that they want a forensic audit of the electoral register and from there on in they can't trust the processes to which reason they will believe in a free, fair and transparent election. In fact, a lot more of the market women, they've, they've left to be part of this, of this, of this particular protest. What's that? And so, a lot more of the market women from the Adabraka market area, they letting their voices be heard at this particular point. Mommy, who's who's the same? For our economy, yes, the same. We be able to be. I feel where you are not brave. You are brave, we gonna. You are brave, you are brave, you are brave. We be able to be better. You are brave. MP before you are brave. 2016, you move. You are feel where you are not at home. And now you are feel where you move. You are better. 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 You
I'm here because I'm here because Timensa is a thief. Baumia is a thief. No, you can't say that. You don't have you don't have evidence. But you're you are here to demand that they audit the register. To make everything clear. Because, because we went to Electoral Commission. We are going to take our father forms. As we, are, we went there, like if it, uh, Accra here, they are 400. Now Accra is 1,000. So it means how, can, how, how, how long they bought these people, they, they will vote and there will be so much people like this. That's the demonstration we are making it. This election we are going, everything is supposed to be clear. We know about Lord Jesus Christ named that. Your mama is a winner. Nobody can stop that because your mama is a winner. I've been to Boliga, I've been to Tamale, I've been to all over the Ghana, and I know how the things is going. Everybody say your mama because your mama is the one who can help Ghana. He do before, and he will still do it. Thank you. Nothing can change it. This world, eh, the good thing must be done. If they did the same thing the last time, they have to do it again. One person can say that, no, no. But Umiya said, Togolese, which is high from the voter region, Togolese are in the register, and they did it. So why is it that now they don't want to do it? Is it because of the errors they did that? Now that is our turn, they don't want to do it. We want to send a signal to everybody in this country. Is that it's, this country goes down. It goes down on the head of the EC. And everybody who is in power to say something, who doesn't say something, if the thing is coming, they will not come for us. We, those who are on the ground, they will come for the leaders. They will come for the pastors. They will come for everybody first before us. So please, make sure you do the right thing. If you do the right thing, the right thing will go on. But if they insist, Ghana will go down on the head of the EC. Thank you. The discrepancies are quite large scale than you've told us about the deletion of names from the register and all of that. Talk to us about the extent of these concerns that you're raising. How many names really do you say the Electoral Commission has deleted from the voters register? We are talking in the region of 243,000 padded names in the register and 3,000 names taken out from the register and 15,000 names been illegally transferred from one constituency to another. So in all the combined effect is that we are talking of almost a million votes that has been manipulated in the register. We can allow this nonsense to happen. They have done that purposely to rig the election for MPP so that we can have an illegal president come December 7. Over our dead body, it won't happen. Well, no. yes. You are accusing the Electoral Commission of attempting to rig the upcoming election. Yes, of course. Why should they pad the voter register with this magnitude of discrepancies? What is the essence? The essence is to rig the election because we know that there are MPP people appointed into the Electoral Commission. That is why they are doing that kind of nonsense. We are not going to accept it. They must clean the register. Otherwise, we won't accept it. They say that come to the table and that all you are doing is not important. In fact, today Cordeo has issued a, a statement where they are advising the NDC to go for a dialogue and have a conversation because that is what will bring about the changes you're asking for. What do you say to Cordeo and the Peace Council who say that a demonstration is not important? Madam Jean Mensa, in 2015, 15th October 2015, stated when she was a director of IEA that they need a neutral body to audit the register. An independent body, that was Madam Jean Mensah's statement. She was then the IEA director. That an independent body should be set to investigate and audit the register before we go to 2016. What has changed? She's now the commissioner. What has changed? Double standard of Jean Mensah. In when, when MPP were in opposition, you were calling for independent uh, audit of the register. Today you are the electoral commissioner. She doesn't want audit. Double standard. The hypocrisy of this country has reached mountain. They should play her step back to her. When McMenu was calling for audit in 2016, when Baumia was calling for audit 2016, when Samuel Uku was calling for audit 2016, Charlotte Osei constituted five-man committee headed by Justice Scrap. 
and we had an audit. MPP went ahead and won the election. What has changed? Ask them, what has changed? These are crooked electoral commissioners. We will not agree. The audit must come on. We've spoken to the minority leader who says, look, if no course of action is taken, they will force a recall of parliament over this issue. Is this something that is a general consensus uh, for, for MPP? Well, once our leader has spoken, it is something all of us are going to support. And once parliament is recalled, whatever we need to do to exert accountability of the electoral commissioner, that is what we are going to do. Democracy is not free. Democracy is expensive. You must fight for democracy. You can't sleep for democracy. You can't be resting for democracy. You can't, you can't just reluctantly remain in your corner and think that everything will work because we are in a democratic state. You need to fight for democracy. You need to stand for democracy. You need to demand for democracy. And that is exactly what we are doing on this occasion. We will demand forensic audit of the register until the EC does the audit. Because we believe that is the only means to ensure free and fair elections. Only means to ensure free and fair elections. What happens if, if the Electoral Commission doesn't heed to it? Well, we will leave the if to the if. What happens is in our head. Let, let's talk about Medina and, and, the, and, the, and the controversies and the discrepancies. Is it the case that you've identified some of these challenges in, in the Medina constituency? Well, I haven't identified a widespread challenge in Medina. But just yesterday, just yesterday, when we were preparing to receive His Excellency John Jamani Mahama in Medina, one of the women walked to me and said she went to look for her name during the exhibition. Her name was not in the register, even though she didn't, uh, she didn't I mean, uh, uh, transfer her, her vote from Medina. So it's something we really believe. In fact, we are so interested in the audit because we believe that the audit has the potential of bringing us a lot of things. And so our demand is only one. Please audit the register. Thank you very much. And, and what, what's the Medina constituency looking like uh, for you uh, some 80 days roughly? to the December election? Well, I think that it looks good because His Excellency John Dramani Mahama was in Medina yesterday. We had community engagement in Oyarifa and then around the Libya quarters on the Sakura Park. And I can assure you that when you look at the, the sheer turnout of people who came to listen to His Excellency John Dramani Mahama, and you look at how the people accepted the 24-hour economy, accepted all the policies that NDC intend bringing on board from 2025, I can assure you that Medina is ready to retain their MP. Medina is ready to increase the vote of His Excellency John Dramani Mahama. And I want every viewer to know that our target is to ensure that we get no less than 120,000 votes for the presidential and the parliamentary elections. Ye president inu o she ye bo se oba oba bua ye se se ni ama na nko ye ye bre ye binu ye ti da bo dem still ye da su wo ye man to me she ye se se anu eh e kom di ye se se ye si register ye mbue e ma ye ntu aba e wa bota bu no se se ye npe de mensa ye kan chiro ni se ye tu ye ye oba we are not fighting anybody. Just if you know you are not hiding anything from Ghanaians. We are, we are asking you to do forensic audit. What, why, are you, why are you running away from it? Why are you running away from it? Simple, we need a credible register for election 7th December 2024. We don't like violence. NDC is not asking for violence. Simple. In this election, or if we need free and fair election, we are calling on things that will make the register or the voting processes free and fair. Imagine a police conducting um, I mean, uh, a random search and they find out that there is, there is narcotic on you 
and they are asking that because there is a huge amount of narcotic on you, let's go into your room to see if there are more there. And we are resisting the police. Aren't you calling for 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 for, for fight? Aren't you calling for? Aren't you calling for fight? If you are resisting, I mean arrest. You are calling for a fight. If you are resisting arrest, and that is what the NDC stands for. We need a credible register. If I go to the registration for, um, and then my name is there, you are not disenfranchising me. But if I go and my name is not there, you are disenfranchising me. Moreover, there are more people who are dead before the, um, this time and then before the general election. And we are calling for a forensic audit. Let it be done and we will have a free and fair election. That's why the fact that we are demonstrating. Our demonstration is very free, it's very fair. And, and the understanding of it is that the EC should do the right thing and we will adhere to them for the election and the results we are calling for. All right, let's, let's, let's hear from you as well. Is that a, a similar argument you're making? Yes, what I want to say is that the National Democratic Congress, Congress gave birth to this democracy that we are enjoying. And therefore, the party, the NDC, is poised to making sure that the democracy and the peace that we are enjoying can, will never be destroyed. And therefore, whatever we have identified as a tool that is potentially going to destroy our demo democracy and peace, that is what the NDC is fighting because we gave birth to this democracy. I want to say that the Electoral Commission now is becoming a threat to our peace and our democracy. And therefore, we are demonstrating to the world and for Ghanaians to rise and to question the Electoral Commission to sit Right now, the Jemensa um, led uh, uh, the Jemensa Electoral Commission, Dr. Bosman uh, uh, Asari Electoral Commission, is becoming a threat to our peace and democracy, and that is what the NDC is trying to solve and to prevent any problem from happening. We are for peace. We are uh, uh, We are we are demonstrating peacefully, and we want all Ghanaians to support this call. You say you're you're a victim. Yes, I'm a victim. Transferred illegally. Illegally, I'm a victim of. That. Where 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 do you vote originally? And where have you been transferred to? I voted at uh, Okai Gray North. Teresa Winnie is my MP. I voted in 2020 election. This year, because I voted in 2020, my mind was that, oh, once I voted in 2020, there's no need to go and check when they open the voter exhibition. So I didn't go. Till on the last day, the last day of the voter exhibition, I text, a friend of mine called me from Tamale that they've illegally transferred her vote to Pussycat. He is vote in Tamale Sat. So they've, that they, they've transferred the vote. So I should go and check if I said, because I voted in 2020, it will not happen. I should just go and check. When I went, they are closed. So he texted me a code that NDC had generated to use and check. When I checked, instead of Okai Gray North, they took me to the same White Chapel in uh, uh, Anya Sotwom. Even though it's not far from each other, it's just a uh, neighboring co constituency. You know why they did this? There is a winning constituency, you know. It's a swing constituency. But Anya Sotwom, the likelihood of MPP winning it is very high. So if the illegal transfer, you go there. Wherever you vote, I might not change the outcome of the Anya Sotom because but I wouldn't consider it. The magic she won the seat with was not that much. So they can easily do that to the Sembrajas people and, 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 and took you out. That's what they did to me. So they transferred you from Okaikwe North to Anya Sotom. When I did not step my foot there to change my uh, do a voter transfer. So I reported to my constituency executive. They said they are on it. It's part of the reason why I am here demonstrating. I am a victim of that. So as at now, you don't know whether or not you've been brought back to Okai Kwe? No, 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 not at all. So my only decision is that they should open the register, let them audit the uh, uh, register for us to check and see everything is okay, perfect, perfect, peace and fall, that's all. And another thing why I'm here, you see this government, their history, they have never built a public university before in Ghana. But they go around naming public university, what does it make sense? Anything to necessarily work in our favor as NDC. But let's just ensure that the right thing is done. Everywhere, all organizations, whether public or private, accounts are audited. Whatever has gone on, I saw my name in the register, all right. But I know of other people whose names were not in the register. We have made a point about Tamale um, Central, for instance, 25 people being transferred to Pussyga constituency with no, without any knowledge of yes. We spoke about other places. Some people are male, their, their, their identity have become female, their ages have changed and so on. So we are saying that just take a second look at your own register. 
your register in this current form is not fit for purpose. Let the majority decide in a democracy like it's meant to be, so that everybody will be satisfied in the process. It's not necessarily about NDC, it's not necessarily about MPP. Let's ensure that the right thing is done for Ghana, so that at the end of the day, the will of the people would hold. And that is what I'll say, my brother, any day, any time. There's a certain level of seriousness in demanding this audit of the country's electoral register. Thank you very much. I want to thank the good people of Ghana for coming out in their numbers in all the regions to tell the EC that even though it is an independent institution, it is for the people of Ghana. And so when we identify that things are not going well, that will keep the peace and stability that we all desire. There's a need for us to stand up and be counted. There's a need for us to voice out and let our voices count. And every single person out on the street is not doing it because they have nothing doing or they have the luxury of time. But it is to tell the state institutions that they are mandated to serve the people and there are laws that govern their service to the people. And that is all we are requesting for. We are asking that the register going to 2024 elections should be credible enough that nobody will dispute the results that will come out at the end of the day. And we do not want a repeat of 2020 where three, four, five, six results will be announced. If they are competent enough, this is the time to show Ghanaians that they are up to the task which we are paying them to do. So we are here to be counted, to say that we are joining the uh, religious leaders, traditional leaders, the youth, women, men, the aged, and even children from all walks of life, CSOs and everybody to make our voices heard that we do not like the way things are going. And 2024 is a crucial election. We want peace, but in asking for peace, there should be fairness and there should be justice. So they should listen. If the competency has not been at the level that is expected and the mistakes are being pointed out, it is for them to listen to Ghanaians because they are not working for themselves. They are not there for themselves. They are here for the people of Ghana. This is not an issue for NDC alone. It is for the entire country. And that is why we are all out here. Why is she running away from auditing? We just need the register to be audited. That is what only we want. We don't want anything. We are not telling the gentleman to help John Mahama in any way. We say we want an auditing of the register. That is the only thing we are asking for. That's the only thing you are asking for, and that's why you're on the street. Thank you very much. We're still seeing a lot of the police presence and a lot of the tricycles, the different vehicles and vans, all present and part a number of the individuals, tired legs are on some of these pickup vehicles as they make the procession and make their way through the principal streets of the capital, demanding a forensic audit. They will make a first stop at Parliament where they will be submitting a petition to Parliament and then they will head to the headquarters of the uh, Electoral Commission as well. Some of them are saying... The signal to the Electoral Commission that he can't change the results. He is going to audit and audit today, tomorrow. We are ready for him. You are ready for, for the Electoral Commission. Commission? We are going there. He will audit. We need special audit to, for this election. Right. Thank you. And so that is the, the opinions. It continues to be the groundswell of opinions. Uh, amongst the many things, pickups of individuals suggesting that, look, they want jobs, they want um, a decent accommodation, they want to be able to live as well. But a crux of the argument and the matter for a lot of the individuals who have been, who have been speaking to us has been about the fact that they want an audit and that is what they want.
uh, we're not going to all the details, but uh, for the sake of the media, that's challenging for the world. Uh, just to make a summary of the key demands that the National Democratic Congress is making, uh, not just on behalf of the millions of supporters of the party, but on behalf of a country that is crying for things to be done credibly in order to ensure that we can go into the election with peace. Our simple mantra is that if there is nothing to hard, then the demands we are making cannot be asking for too much. And we believe that the parliament of Ghana is in a position to use this massive leverage to ensure that our demands are taken into account and everything is done possible to ensure that we can have a credible voters register in order to have election that will be transparent and fair. So just briefly, I'm uh, uh, going to our 10 main demands that we are making. One, we are asking for a bipartisan proof to the conduct of the election, electoral commission leading to the recommendation of our independent forensic audit of the voters register. Number two, we are asking for the immediate publication of a forensic audit findings once that is conducted. Number three, we are asking for the re-exhibition of the register post-forensic audit. The NDC further demands a five-day re-exhibition of the provisional voters register after the forensic audit is completed. The next one is a review and a correction of unauthorized transfers. Immediate steps must be taken to revise any unauthorized vote transfers and restore the integrity of the voter transfer system. The next one, we are asking for the adoption of a revised timetable for electoral activities. Then, we are demanding for an emergency convening of all stakeholders. The Electoral Commission should urgently convene a meeting with all political parties, civil society organizations, and key international stakeholders, including the ECOWAS, the AU, the UNDP, the EU, USAID, and all others, to discuss the forensic audit and ensure collective oversight of the electoral process. And the final one, we are asking for accountability and integrity measures across all the systems of the electoral commission. The EDC must implement measures to prevent future manipulation of the voters' register. This will include yeah, this will include a review of internal processes, improved transparency in voter registration and transfer system and strict up protocol to safeguard the integrity of the voters' register. So these are, uh, in summary, the key demands that we are presenting to Parliament, and we are expecting the Parliament to use your massive leverage and to make sure this is done. Thank you very much. We cannot allow the Electoral Commission to destroy the most enduring democracy of this republic. Unfortunately, this petition is coming at a time that Parliament is on recess. But I strongly believe that if there is anything that will warrant an emergency recall of Parliament, this is certainly one of them. So the NDC minority 
will immediately convey a caucus meeting and consider the need to recall Parliament to address this position. We consider this as an emergency, and just like my colleague has done in the past, we will do similar by recalling Parliament to address the very concerns that you have raised. We thank you very much for this opportunity. Thank you. National Chairman, General Secretary. I believe that this is one of the several ways of enriching our democracy. So, I agree with the minority leader that as a house, we may have to look at the issues you presented. And I encourage all stakeholders to also avail themselves. Uh, I standing here is on record of having taken EC to the Supreme Court to stop a whole these assembly elections for some irregularities and illegalities. And I made my case at the Supreme Court. That's a matter of record. And I believe that if there are genuine concerns, we can all raise it and discuss them on the table by following lawful means. So I thank you for making time to get to us. I'm sure Mr. Speaker would hear your prayer. Thank you very much. We are happy that you are here. But, uh, we would have preferred to have uh, at least the three senior members of the committee so that they can all the Nevertheless, you are exactly what you said, and so we believe you will carry the message straight to the council. And then the right thing will be done in the spirit of your own vision. We chose to stand by this vision so that everybody will know what we claim we stand for. Transparency, fairness, and integrity. That is what the Electoral Commission of Ghana claims to stand for. We are here this afternoon to urge you to live according to your declared mission. That is transparency, fairness, and integrity. We have our petition in your office that uh, we ventilated many of the issues inside the petition. And we don't want to delay the police because we know we have seen that they have also not included this one. You can easily see the fatigue on their faces. And so I'd like to restrict myself to reading our key demands. And then we will hand over to you the petition. The media can have copies of our petition, whether electronic or hard copy, so that it can save all of us from spending any more time. Our demands, considering the grave irregularities and discrepancies uncovered in the 2024 Provisional Voter Register and the Electoral Commission's admission of unauthorized voter transfers and errors, the National Democratic Congress, in the spirit of safeguarding Ghana's democratic process for free, fair, transparent, on December 7, 2024, respectfully petitioning the Electoral Commission to do the following. Number one, permit an independent forensic audit of the voters' register and it and the Commission's IT system, which we suspect have been seriously compromised. Because we have seen actions we have shown by the gods of Ghana to us that those actions can never happen behind our backs. But they themselves have spent, attested to the fact that those very actions have to be made through manipulation of their system. So we want to learn the rules first 
of any experience. Number two, we demand that the Commission convene stakeholders for collaboration. The Electoral Commission should urgently convene a meeting with all political parties, civil society organizations, and key international stakeholders, including ECOWAS, who are fond of deploying only military when there is crisis. We want them to come and, and help us take preemptive actions against crisis that is growing. It will save them money, time and effort. Africa Union. African Union and USAID, the British High Commission and others to discuss the forensic audit and ensure collective oversight of our electoral process. Accountability, fairness and integrity of the 2024 general elections. If the findings of the forensic audit suggest, as we believe, that the register has been badly compromised, then we demand that there will be a re-exhibition of the register after the forensic audit so that we will be able to check everything that has gone wrong in the register and prepare ourselves for a credible election. We want the Commission to review and correct all the unauthorized transfers which they themselves have admitted to. We want them to adopt a revised timetable for electoral activities. Why do we say so? We don't have a credible register as yet. And printing of ballot papers and other activities are based on a credible voter register. So we think that this forensic audit must take place. We must get a credible register acceptable to all stakeholders before the other activities such as printing of ballot papers commences. And finally, we want the Commission to institute accountability and integrity measures to ensure that what we are witnessing now will never happen in the operations of the Electoral Commission. Indeed, it has never happened until now. So whatever has compromised your systems, it is in your interest that we all look for it, correct it, and then you can restore uh, your integrity and we can have confidence in the electoral process. So on behalf of the National Democratic Congress, we want to hand over the petition to the commissioner, one of the commissioners, that is Mr. Hello. Thank you very much. Hello. Thank you. Hello. So, Hello. thank you very much. And um, let me welcome you to the media. You can see the media. You can see the media. You can see the media. You can block the media. Yes. Don't worry. Don't worry. Thank you very much, and uh, let me welcome you to the corporate head office of the commission. On behalf of the commission, I will receive your petition. I will assure you that your petition will be presented to the commission for consideration. Thank you. We have presented 16 other copies of this petition to your regional directors across the country. If we don't see action, the next time we are going to present 276 copies at each of the district offices of the commission. So gentlemen, I want you to...
know the commissioner who is receiving the petition on our behalf. Your name and designation. My name is Samuel Tete, the deputy chairman in charge of operations. Samuel Tete, deputy chairman of the commission in charge of operations. It is his office that deals actually with the elections. Thank you very much. We hope that you also you make your own work easier by ensuring that you live by your motto of transparency and integrity. Thank you.